Hi everyone, in this video I challenged myself to do a gouache painting using really affordable art supplies. I wanted to show you that you don't have to spend a lot of money on really expensive art supplies to create good quality art. So I'm currently in China and I went out and shopped around the art stores here and I picked up some paint, paper and brushes. I also bought a container to squeeze my gua sha into which I'll talk more about later. But basically I wanted to find really affordable supplies here that I could use to do some gouache paintings. So let me show you what I got and how much they each cost me. I shopped around with a budget of about $10. What I got was a 12 color set Marie's gouache. It works out to be about 4 Australian dollars. Marie's is a Chinese brand so it's really affordable here. For paper, I picked up Canson watercolor paper. I hadn't seen this line of Canson paper before and I was surprised at also how affordable it was. It came down to about $4.50 for 12 of these sheets. They are 300 GSM and just a bit bigger than A5 size. For brushes, I picked these up at a local stationery store. For this pack of five, it cost about $3.50. They're just synthetic brushes. I got some flats and some round brushes. And as an extra thing, I got this case. It comes with a soft silicone lid, which should keep the moisture in when you squeeze out your paints so that they don't dry out. In one of my Himi gouache videos, I talked about how if you want to store your gouache like it is in the Himi set, you could just buy something like this container and squeeze out your gouache into there. So that's what I wanted to try for myself. So in total, I spent about $13, which works out to be around 10 USD. And since this video is all about creating great artwork with affordable supplies, I wanted to talk about using a super affordable website builder to build an amazing website with Zyro. Thank you to Zyro for sponsoring today's video. If you've ever thought about selling your art online or just showcasing your work, then you're going to want to build a professional website. Zyro is one of the most affordable options on the market, but what's even more important is its ease of use. Building a website for the first time can be really daunting. I know that when I wanted to make my first website, I had no idea where to start. But Zyro makes it super easy to do. They have hundreds of designer made templates for you to choose from, which you can then customize to suit your needs and to suit your style and liking. What I like most is the intuitive grid base editor, which allows you to simply drag and drop to edit. So if you're anything like me and hopeless with design and coding, then you don't have anything to worry about when using Zara. They also have 24 seven live chat customer support, which I think is really important because you're probably going to run into problems or questions if you're doing this for the first time and being able to chat with a real person to help resolve your issues is really helpful. Use my limited time offer to build your new website for less than $3 a month. You can follow the link in the description and use code JESS to get up to 72% off plus 3 months free with any yearly plan. So when it came to storing the gouache in the container, it was very easy. I just squeezed out all of the gouache and misted it with some water. And then using a paper clip, I went and stirred the gouache with the water so that it was a nice creamy consistency. I was most curious to know if this container was airtight and would prevent the gouache from drying out. So I first set this palette up about two months ago and after misting it with some water and closing the lid, I checked on it every few days and it seemed like it didn't dry out at all. It took me a really long time to get around to making this video so by the time I actually got to use the gouache it was two months later and I got a little bit lazy with checking in on it and probably for a month I didn't even open it to look at it and surprisingly it was not dried out at all by the time I was ready to use it. I think a silicon lid works better at keeping the moisture in compared to a hard plastic lid. You can see with this silicon case it has individual grooves in it so when you fit it on it fits perfectly. A while ago I also bought the Magello watercolor palette 
Supposedly it said it was airtight but I used it once when I went out to plain air and then I left the gouache in there and not long after it completely dried out and that one was a hard plastic container so in comparison to that this one is much much better and when I bought this container I actually bought two of it plus another one that's a little bit bigger and I'm planning to squeeze out some of my artist grade gouache into these containers so it's more convenient for me to take them out when I go plain air because my Himi gouache is a little bit too heavy to bring out with me and this size of container is really perfect for traveling with also it's very lightweight I'm glad I got to experiment with this using some really inexpensive gouache first because I was worried that if I use my expensive gouache and it ended up drying out then I would feel like it was really wasteful but because I had this inexpensive gouache I didn't worry too much about whether it would succeed or not for the painting that I chose to do, I picked a photo that I took at a park that I walked through. This is of a lotus pond. I've painted something similar once before. It was another lotus pond at a different park and I really liked painting it. So I wanted to try again using a different photo and to test out this affordable gouache set. I'll briefly talk about the process and my approach to this painting and then share some thoughts on these affordable supplies. So when it came to approaching this painting, I started off with thinner layers of paint and then gradually built up the opacity. Most of the time when I paint with gouache, I work almost entirely opaquely and I work from top to bottom, working from the background to the foreground. But I found that for some paintings, it's not as easy to do this and it's easier to work in layers, starting with thinner layers and building up the opacity. Just like in my Spirited Away painting that I did with the Himi gouache, it made a lot more sense to work in layers. So here I started by blocking in big patches of color, so just loosely blocking in the foliage in the background and then uh, covering the lotus pond in a very thin light layer of green. This light greenish layer will um, peek through at the end and will form the highlights. If I don't lay this light layer down now, it, it's a little bit hard to get the dark green leaves to pop later. So I like to lay down this light layer first and then to just suggest the distant uh, lotus leaves by just using lots of uh, small brush strokes. What I like about painting a uh, lotus pond is that when you look at it from afar, you can tell what it is and it reads as what it is. But when you look at it closely, actually, it's not very detailed at all and you'll see throughout this process that the strokes I'm laying down actually aren't really that detailed. I only focus on a few of the lotus leaves that are at the front. So as I'm building up the layers, I'm gradually making the darks darker and building up the opacity of the paint. As for the materials that I used and how I felt about them, I think the paper I really enjoyed using. The paper had a very nice texture to it. It was very good quality. The gouache was just okay. I didn't love it. The texture of it wasn't as creamy and as nice as say my Winsor Newton gouache, but obviously I can't compare the two because of the significant price difference. But if I were to compare it to the Himi gouache, I do like the Himi gouache better. I kind of felt like this gouache wasn't as opaque as I wanted it to be. But also one thing I didn't like was the colors that came in the 12 color set. This is partly my fault because I didn't even bother to look at what colors it came with when I bought it. I was just really focused on finding a really affordable set and staying within the budget I set for myself. So without having even looked at the colors I purchased this set and it wasn't until I opened it and realized that actually I was missing some colors that I prefer to work with if I have a limited color set it didn't have a warm blue 
and it didn't have a cool red and also it didn't have burnt umber and I did struggle a little bit to work around that but still it was manageable and I managed to produce the painting that I did but if I could choose some different colors to replace I definitely would so maybe this isn't the color set that I would start out with if I were a beginner so both the gouache set and the Canson paper when I went to look at the pricing on Amazon was quite a bit higher than what I paid for here. So maybe when you're buying art supplies for the first time, you can actually just choose affordable local brands to try out. If I were in Australia back at home, I would have done this challenge buying affordable supplies in my local art stores. It might have cost a bit more than the budget I had here since over here art supplies are very inexpensive when they're the local brand here. But anyways, this was just a fun experimental video for me to make. I just wanted to challenge myself to try using materials I was unfamiliar with and that were not artist grade or anything expensive and see how far I could go with it. I forgot to talk about the brushes. They were fine to use. They were just really inexpensive synthetic brushes. Actually, the round brushes I really enjoyed because it came to a really pointy tip, which is something I find really important for my gouache paintings when I need to do details. So these brushes were actually quite good. Anyways, hopefully this video inspired you in some way to either go out there and buy some supplies to get started or to bring out some old supplies you haven't touched in a while and try doing a painting with them. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye!